Welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's episode, I have some big news. Are you ready? I'm so excited to tell you. We got bunnies. There are many Rex bunnies and they're both girls, at least, oh my gosh, I hope they're both girls. It's kind of hard to tell at this stage. That's Sweet Pea and this is Lily. And for now, we've got them in a really large dog crate, but I have ordered them a nice playpen. I'm gonna set up a whole area for them to run around and play. And I have a house ordered for them to get in when they wanna get in. And I think they're gonna be the happiest bunnies. And so my thrift flips today are just for the bunnies. But these ideas could work for any pet. So if you're a dog or a cat owner or any other animal, you can use these ideas for your pets and stay tuned to the end to see how Piper and Yachty are doing with the new additions to the family. So instead of going out and buying expensive things for my bunnies, I wanted to personalize things and make crafts, of course. So I've got this whole cart full of stuff that was less than $20 and I'm gonna rework that sign. You'll have to see what I do with the baskets. This is a recipe box that I have an idea for and this is a nice dish. I'm not gonna do anything too, but that's gonna be their water bowl. So the first pet DIY will be, I'm gonna rework this sign so that it will be personalized just for Sweet Pea and Lily. So the first order of business was to remove the home letters and this sign was made really well. I'm not gonna say this was easy to remove these letters because they were glued on and they also had some teeny tiny little nails that they are stuck on with. So I used my hair dryer on its hottest setting to try to melt the glue and then I used a screwdriver or whatever I could find to pry up the wooden letters. I scratched it up pretty bad trying to get those letters off, I'm not gonna lie, but it'll work out in the end. Then I used my needle nose pliers to pull out the tiny little nails so I could paint it better. And I sanded it down to try to get it as smooth as I possibly could. I thought I was ready to paint, so I had my paint all ready and I did do a coat of cashmere, but I realized that I didn't have it sanded as smooth as I would have liked. So I dried up the paint and now I'm going to use some lightweight spackle from the Dollar Tree to try to make this sign a little smoother. And after the spackle was dry, I sanded it to try to get it as smooth as I could again, which didn't turn out perfect, but it was a lot better and you won't even notice all these little imperfections in the end. And besides, this is a farmhouse rustic sort of sign, so imperfections are welcome. And since I had to paint it again, I decided to go another route. I'm using my fusion paint in the color Picket Fence. That's gonna be my base layer. And then when that was dry, I took my fusion paint in the color Cashmere and I'm doing a really dry brush technique. So I'm offloading most of that paint and I'm going to put in some little distressed wood marks. And so it's not a deep dark brown wood showing through, just a hint of brown and I think it's perfect for the blonde color of this wood on this sign. And here's how it's looking after it's little bit of distressing. And now I'm going to turn to my essential stencil stash, which I will link in my description box below if you wanna check out essential stencils. They are affordable stencils that you can use. They're not the screen type, they're regular stencils. They're washable and reusable. And I'm using these bunnies one of them's gonna be Sweet Pea and one of them's gonna be Lily. And there's two stencils with this, a bottom layer and a top layer, and you'll see how I use them. So your bottom stencil is just your shape of the bunny. And you wanna use whatever color that you want your bunny to be. So I thought I was gonna make them gray. I don't know why I chose gray. I didn't have any white chalk paint because you're supposed to use chalk paint with stencils. So I went with this gray color, but I'm gonna, there's gonna be two versions of this and you'll see. Anyway, tape your stencil down into place so that you're sure that it won't move. And then I'm using an essential stencil, stencil brush. So it's just one of those bristly stencil, stencil brushes. And I apply the chalk paint in a swirling kind of circular motion. 
and try to do a dry brush offload as much paint as you can and then you won't have any bleed through under the stencil and i should have done two coats because you can see those brush marks anyway remove your stencil while the paint is still wet and then dry it up at this point i was already thinking uh, i don't know if i like these gray bunnies because they almost look like black bunnies they're so dark against that light color sign so i'm already having second thoughts about my color choice next you layer on the second stencil it goes right on top of where your first stencil was and this is of course you can see how you get your details and so here's where i had a problem i didn't know what color to make the details because i didn't have any white chalk paint i plum forgot to buy any more while i was out and <laughs> so i thought well i guess i could use black paint but i didn't know how well that was going to show up on this kind of dark gray color that i had but i tried it anyway and I did use some pink chalk paint on the flower on this other bunny. And here's the reveal of the gray bunnies, which wasn't terribly bad. I didn't hate it. I just wished that I would have used two coats of that gray paint because I could see the swirly brush marks. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I needed to touch up where that flower was, but you know, I just, I just wasn't happy about it. So here's a lesson. If you're not happy with the color choice you made either, you can put your bottom stencil, your first one you used, right back over the top again and do another color. And I wanted these bunnies to be a lighter color. I didn't want them so dark. So even though I don't have any white chalk paint or any lighter color chalk paint, I decided to try my fusion paint. And it's not thick like chalk paint. It's definitely runnier. So I was scared to try it but I did a dry brush technique. I offloaded most of my paint. I still used stencil brush and still use the swirly little motions, the circle motions to put it on with. And I'm gonna tell you what, it did just fine. And don't forget, you have to dry up your paint before you add on your second stencil, of course. So here comes the second detail stencil right over the top. And I'm still gonna use the black paint and I'm gonna line up the whiskers. That was the most important thing to me. I wanted the whiskers to line up. And I did the black paint and the pink flower. Now these bunnies look a lot more like Sweet Pea and Lily. I liked it a lot better. And I still had to do a little touch up on the ear next to the pink flower because I got some of that pink paint up there, but just, Use a teeny tiny little brush for any little details like that that need fixed. And I think these stencils turned out great. And because I wanted this sign to be extra nice and special for my little bun buns, I got out my Cricut and I made some decals that say Sweet Pea and Lily. So next time you're at the thrift store, don't pass up any signs that you think are cute. You can rework them. And I've already looked on Essential Stencil and they have stencils for cats and stencils for dogs. Next up is a pet teepee. So I'll be using some macrame cord, some wooden dowels, and a tablecloth that I thrifted at Goodwill that wasn't in the cart of stuff before. You'll need four wooden dowels and they all need to be cut the same size. These are 7 16 inch dowels and they are 48 inches long. So I got two of them and I'm gonna cut them both in half. Working with two of the dowels, I've tied a knot around the top end about four inches down from the top. And I've tied it really tight and now I'm gonna wrap as tight as I can four times around. Then instead of making the fifth wrap, you go down in between the two dowels and then split the dowels and start wrapping vertically four times as tight as you can.
then tie a double knot to secure it. And you can leave a long tail. And repeat that process with the second set of dowels. Now stand your dowels up and put one over the top of the other one. Take some more macrame cord and tie them both together with a double knot. And begin wrapping the two sets together with vertical kind of diagonal wraps until you feel they are secure. Tie a double knot when you're done wrapping. And I know this looks like a lot of macrame cord and kind of a mess, but it's gonna be covered up with our little tent that we're gonna make. Remember the long tail we left hanging? Now you can take that up to the top and wrap it around like a circle to kind of bring it all together. And tie it in a knot at the end. Now that we have our frame, we need to measure to make sure that we cut our panels about approximately the right size. I'm say approximately because you're gonna see that I rough do a rough cut. <laughs> Nothing is exact here. Um, if you are lucky enough that your frame comes together, that all four of your panels are the same size, that's great. That's why I didn't cut my panels first. That's why I made my frame first because I had a feeling that it was going to turn out different sizes on all sides and that that was true for me so just make sure you measure across the bottom and up to the top and you're going to cut triangles to fit all four of these sides here's my thrifted tablecloth all washed up and ready to go it had a few coffee stains that were very uh, stubborn and didn't come out completely, but I'm okay with that. So now I'm going to cut out my triangles according to the measurements that I took. I had doubled up my fabric, so I have two of the smaller panels here, and I just finished cutting out my two bigger panels. So I have four triangles all together. So you could take this to your sewing machine and run it through, and it wouldn't take no time, but I don't have a sewing machine. And this time I'm choosing to use hot glue for this project because it's fast and it holds good. So I'm going to put my two good sides together and run a line of hot glue and put them together. You'll notice that I'm gluing one of my smaller triangles to one of my larger triangles to accommodate my measurements of my frame. And if all of your sides are the same, if you get the same measurements, like it come together for you like, oh, then it's probably gonna be a little less confusing when you go to putting it together. But still, it's just gluing these pieces together and thinking in your mind, you know, what side of the tent these pieces are going on. Now to the smaller size triangle, I'm gluing a larger size triangle. Again, putting your two good sides together. Each time I glue a seam, I turn it over and I check to make sure that it's glued in a solid line. Then to the big triangle, I glue my last small triangle. And to finish, you just glue together the two open ends. And now you have your tent part made. You can turn it right side out and see how you did. And you need to cut a little bit off of the top to make room for your poles to stick out. Now the moment of truth, put the tent down over your teepee frame. I'll take some more macrame cord and wrap around the top to secure the tent to the dowels. Now we have to make an entrance. So just on your front piece, split it up the middle, and then you can make two flaps to tie back. I'm hot gluing them for now just to keep them in place where I want them to go. 
and I made some cute little jute string bows and I'm gonna hot glue those to look like tie backs. But to make sure the bunnies don't gnaw and chew the little bows off, I decided to go back with some needle and thread. And so I'm sewing the bows on and actually sewing those flaps up too. So you can take this idea and instead of paying 50 bucks for a TP online, you can make your own much cheaper and make it larger or smaller to accommodate your pet. For the next pet thrift flip, I found this wooden recipe box and I'm going to turn it into a bunny treat box, but you can take this idea and turn it into a treat box for any of your pets. First I took off the hinges so that I could paint it. And anytime I take stuff apart that has screws and hinges and stuff, I like to put them in a Ziploc baggie so they don't get lost. I painted the whole box inside and out and the lid with my Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Picket Fence. I'm using Waverly Antique Wax and a foam brush to do a little distressing around the edges. And a little teensy tiny bit in the middle too. And I wanted there to be some bunnies on here too. And so I got these transfers from Essential Stencil, still linked in my description box below. And these are back from Easter in a spring collection that I got from them. And I picked out two that look like Lily and Sweet Pea. Oh my gosh, aren't they perfect? Then I put the hinges and the lid back on and put some little bunny treats inside. For this pet thrift flip, you'll need some baskets. And I got these smaller ones that's going to be holding their Timothy hay. But you could also use these for dog toys or cat toys or whatever toys your pets like to play with. And the larger one is going to be a pet bed. When you buy baskets at the thrift store, it's important to clean them with some Dawn dish soap and some white vinegar. I like to do mine in the bathtub so I have plenty of room. I just run some really hot water, a generous squirt of Dawn dish soap, and about a quarter cup of the white vinegar. That's for disinfecting. And then I kind of slosh the baskets around in the water and I let them sit for at least an hour. And if it's a sunny day, it's best to put them right out in the sun to dry. Sometimes after washing and cleaning them, the weaves want to come undone. So if there's any that want to poke out and stick out that could hurt your animals, you want to be sure to cut those off. And now to make the pet bed, and this is so easy. Just take some wire cutters, and if your basket has a handle, you may find a basket that doesn't even have a handle. But I had to cut the handle off of mine. Then take a thrifted pillow that you've washed and is ready to go and just pop it right in the middle. Now didn't I tell you that was gonna be easy? Now let's take a look back at all our thrift flips for pets today.
time for a cute cat video. We were very careful introducing the bunnies to Yachty and Piper because, you know, they're natural enemies. So we let them be in their cage and let the cats sniff around, but the cats were seeming pretty okay. They weren't hissing or puffing up or anything, and they kind of acted like they actually could be friends, and they're just more curious than anything. So under very close supervision, we let the bunnies out to see about the cats and the cats to see about the bunnies. And they're playing together and getting along just fine. And so we are so tickled that we have these new little bunnies that are so precious. They can be friends to the cats and little pets for us. The Bun Buns say, nice to meet you and thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Bye.